Hey! I talk a lot about old games in my other videos. Some people think that's all I like. So here I'm trying something different. I'm going to be talking about brand new games. This is going to be a list of all the most recent games I'm looking forward to. But it's going to be a little different. There's a famous XKCD comic about a guy who plays all of his games on a four-year lag. So we can have a great experience on a budget. Well, this is starting to not even be a joke for me. I feel like the industry is practically training us to wait on buying new games. Let me ask you, how often does a game come out that has a day one patch to fix major bugs? Or how often does a decent $50 or $60 game get marked down to $5 two years later during a sale? A lot. That's how much. People will talk about the good old days of gaming. Well, it was never this cheap in the good old days. It's amazing. So I'm going to be talking about games that aren't out, are in early access, or have come out within about the past six months or so. To me, it's all the same thing. They're all games I'm not going to be playing anytime soon. I have not played any game on this list, so I don't know if they're good, but I suspect it. Don't ask me next year either, I probably still won't know. But five years, yeah, I hope to get through them. Now this is a top 25 list. Now you might be thinking, Ross, isn't that kind of too many? Shouldn't you just do a top 10 list instead? Yes, it is too many. I wanted to do a shorter list, but there are so many good games coming out. I could have cut this to maybe 23, 22, but that's it. You may want to watch this in chunks. These are not games I'm thinking, oh yeah, that might be good. No, these are all games I really want to play. In fact, even though this is a countdown, you should maybe think of this as like a 25 way tie. Number one isn't going to be that much better than number 25, just different. Also, these are my super personalized picks. I never really like generic top 10 lists because they're usually just the stuff that's the most popular. I feel like the best games try to aim for a specific audience rather than try to please everyone. So you're going to get an idea of my taste. You may hate every game on this list, but hey, that's useful to know. Then in the future, if you know I like something, you can think, oh, Ross likes that, huh? Yeah, I'll pass. Finally, these are all PC games, since that's what I have. A lot of you probably have one too. A few of these are multi-platform, but I wasn't really keeping track. Okay, so here are all the new games I am looking forward to above all others. Into the Stars. Best I can tell, this is a really nice looking version of the game FTL, but with more resource management. It has the music composer from Mass Effect, and this game is not afraid to use the color blue. I respect that. Really, this game looks great, except I think it has that pseudo turn-based combat like in Chrono Trigger. And man, that is a rough hurdle for me to jump over. That's why it's at the bottom of this list. Maybe I could just ram my ship into everyone instead. Anyway, I noticed one screen here where this bug race wants to trade you resources in exchange for your crew members because they're very hungry. Now, if this was FDL, my answer would be hell no. Your crew members are vital. You can't toy around with them like that. But look at this. I'm carrying 10,000 civilians on this ship. That means I have options. I like having options. The Last Door. Now this is a game that's already out, but they're still working on more episodes and I like to wait until games are done before I start playing them. This is an Edgar Allan Poe, HP Lovecraft inspired graphic adventure mystery horror game. It has a good reputation, I like the theme and art design, so yeah, I'm interested in playing it. I do hope it doesn't have the unsolvable puzzles the way a lot of point and click adventures do, but I guess I'll have to find out. Now this is a little lower on the list because of the resolution. I think the resolution of this is 60 or 70 pixels tall. That's lower than DOS games. That's lower than the Atari 2600. Good God. 
Firewatch! This is a mystery adventure game that involves you watching out for fires and exploring the Wyoming wilderness. It looks pretty good. I like exploration games like this. They're raising the intrigue level, which I like, but the trailer has some soap opera crap going on with the dialogue. So, last night... You know we shouldn't talk about it. Please, stop. I don't give a shit. That could go either way. Like, if this becomes anticlimactic and it's really just about their awkward, dead-end relationship, I don't want to hear about that. But maybe that's all just a distraction from the real plot where it turns out my character is secretly a firebug and is coming to burn everyone down. I would want to play that. Okay, you should know that I'm a big fan of the older Castlevania games. I love their atmosphere. And this platformer looks like the closest thing I've seen to it that's not Castlevania. In fact, this looks more like Castlevania than even some of the later Castlevania games. My main issue with this is the trailer music sounds a little corny. So you may have to mute the music and just put on some Castlevania music instead. But yeah, it looks pretty good. The guy has a beard, long hair, a cape. What more do you want? I like scenic winter games, and wouldn't you know it, snow is a scenic winter game. It's looking great, and it has some variety to the environments. I like how you can do night skiing in this. Now, I do think some of the animations are a little clunky, and they're way too forgiving with some of the collisions. Yeah, give me a break. He shouldn't be walking after that. Can you believe the official trailer doesn't even show ragdoll physics? That's the most important part. I wasn't even sure if they had them, but I did find one quick shot in an update video. Oh yeah, this game's gonna be good. Okay, first off, I hated the music to this trailer so much that I muted the sound completely. So you've gotta figure, this game has potential if it's on my list in spite of that. I'm not even a huge fan of this cartoonish look either, to be honest, but it looks pretty nice otherwise. Anyway, this is a survival game about traveling downstream on a procedurally generated river in post-collapse America. You find locations and get out and see what's happening. This concept really grabbed me for some reason, and I think I know why. This is the post-apocalyptic version of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The difference is you play as a woman, and instead of a runaway slave, you have a dog. But the plot premise looks the same to me. Anyway, it sounds like this game won't be pulling any punches since they show the protagonist collapse from exhaustion right in the trailer. But what's this? Will a preacher emerge from this boarded up church to come save you? No, it's a pack of wolves. Just in case the dehydration didn't kill you first. Your ass is dead. Better restart your game. Riot. This game is a riot simulator. See, this is what I mean. All these games coming out that feel like they're designed for me. You get to play as the protesters or the police. I can't even decide which one would be more fun. It covers some real world riots, like Egypt, Greece. Although since this game got started, I think we're gonna need an additional campaign for Ukraine. That's the beauty of this game. As the global economy destabilizes, there's going to be no end to the number of expansions they can make. I'm normally not really into JRPGs or anime-themed games, but I do like hack and slashes, and Lost Ark is just trying everything it possibly can to get your attention. Now, I kind of prefer more personalized smacks to the face rather than a constant fireworks show every time you attack, but I admit, this looks cool, and I think I'd want to play through it once. The part that really sold me was at one point in the trailer, you start hauling floating islands towards you so you can walk across them, then proceed to go beat up a bunch of angels. I don't care who you are. If that was going on, everyone would stop and look at it. Okay, I'm cheating on this entry, and I'm including a few games here, because to me, they're all the same game. Not that I have a problem with that. Surveyorium, Miscreated, and H1Z1 are all DayZ knockoffs. You go around and scavenge for supplies, fight zombies or monsters, 
I try not to get shot by other players on the server. Yeah, sure, there are probably subtle differences between them, but they're so small they all just blend together in my mind. In general, I like these kinds of games as an excuse to explore the world they've created, but I never really care much about the PvP stuff. I just sort of play them until I explore the world, then I'm done with them. But they're fun while they last. Now I have to say, the scariest thing about these games to me is that I believe they all require a central server in order to run. So if the host company ever stops that, these games die for good. Now these are all by smaller or medium sized companies however, so maybe there's a chance they would patch them to still be played if the server did get shut down. I would really love to see all companies commit to end of life plans for online only games. I'm never gonna shut up about that, sorry. Once again, I like hack and slashes, and the presentation of this is looking pretty solid. Everything about this is reminding me of Path of Exile, just in a more temperate climate. I do think the music really doesn't live up to the rest of the art design here. Grim Dawn doesn't sound grim enough. I doubt there will be many surprises with this game, but I have no problem with another competent hack and slash on the market. A hero's journey of beating the crap out of everything that moves is a tale I don't mind witnessing again and again. Clockwork Empires. This game kind of surprised me. I originally read about it as just some cutesy steampunk city building game, and it didn't really grab my attention that much. But then I found out later that beneath the happy Sims-like atmosphere, there are horrors awaiting everywhere if your villagers start pushing boundaries. If they're hungry enough, they resort to cannibalism. There are fish people living in the ocean that can invade you. You can find strange artifacts in the woods that might inflict madness or summon otherworldly beings. Now, I'm not saying that adding some HP Lovecraft to your game automatically makes it better, but... Well, maybe that is what I'm saying. Kolot is an exploratory horror game about the infamous Dyatlov Pass incident. This was a real event. A bunch of hikers went off camping into the mountains, and all nine of them ended up dead in ways that suggest they all went insane. To this day, nobody knows what happened or has a better explanation than they all went insane, even though they were fine the day before. There was a movie made inspired by this event, and I thought it was pretty good. But hey, I would love to see what this game's explanation is. And as a bonus, it's being narrated by Sean Bean. Hard to go wrong there. And you may not believe me, but my current landlord kind of looks like Sean Bean. So that makes this a must play for me. Hey, we're about halfway through. This is just a quick intermission. Might want to take a break, come back later. I knew a guy before who played Quake 2 for three days straight, so he would probably watch this all the way through, but I think it's kind of insane to stay awake that long. The most I've ever been awake has been 50 hours. It was brutal. I never outright hallucinated, but I kept seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Wakey, wakey everyone. It's another fabulous day in Wellington Wells. The weather is only slightly rainy with streaks of lovely sunshine. This is the most recently announced game on this list. It got my attention. We Happy Few is about this surreal 1960s society where everyone is drugged up and there's some serious Twilight Zone shit going on here. I'm not even completely sure what's happening, just that you're an imposter and you're trying to survive in this psychotically upbeat society before they discover you and do horrible things, I imagine. I'm not a paranoid person, so this should give me a good taste of what it feels like. If you are a paranoid person, then you shouldn't have even watched this. I'm sorry. I love scenic open world driving games, and that's exactly what the crew is. You get to drive across a miniaturized version of the entire continental US. I read it takes two hours real time to go from one end to the other. Outstanding. So what this comes down to is if you don't like the environments in this game, 
You don't like America. Now, I have heard the physics aren't very good and the story is crap, but I'm pretty forgiving about that sort of thing. I mostly just want to see the country they've gone and fleshed out. Also, this is a driving game, so the fact that it even has a story is just a bonus. My standards are non-existent in that department, so it's just an excuse to do some more driving. Now, with that said, this game is an abomination because it requires a connection to an online server and Ubisoft will shut it down eventually. I'm not speculating. Ubisoft has already done this with the game Shadowbane. So this game is still a new launch and it's already on death row. What a piece of shit. I hate this practice so much. This is how they get you. They release a game you want to play, but it's a poison pot of honey because it's designed to die. As soon as running servers for the crew stops being profitable to them, they'll shut it down forever and you're all fucked. Have a nice day. Okay, this is going to sound like blasphemy to some, but I haven't actually played through the Homeworld games. My understanding is that they are the Mount Everest of real-time strategy games. It's not that I shy away from an RTS challenge, it's that my brain isn't so great with full 3D space the way they operate. Well, this sounds like it could be Homeworld on the ground where my brain can handle it. The plot premise is that there's a gold rush to salvage all these huge starships that have crashed on this planet for reasons that nobody can figure out. But hey, why should we concern ourselves about all these abandoned, wrecked starships all in one place for no reason? I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Dex. This is an open world, side-scrolling action RPG. I'm picky about platformers these days, but this one looks solid. The art style is great. You know a game like this is likely to have a lot of depth and it has a cool cyberpunk theme going on. So what's not to like? Well, once again, this trailer music is not impressing me. I mean, we have a gritty looking cyberpunk game. Gee, what kind of music should we have to go with that? Maybe some hardcore electronic or even industrial music? No, screw that. Let's give it a generic, forgettable symphony soundtrack. Come on, guys. Okay, I have another one of my cheat entries, because guess what? These all look like the same game to me. These are all real-time strategy games where you're fighting a bunch of robots. First we have Ethereum. You control a bunch of robots, and you fight a bunch of robots. Based on the trailers, this one has the best music out of the bunch. Next we have Grey Goo. Here you play as humans, and maybe another faction, fighting a bunch of robots. It probably has the most developed story out of all of these. I've heard this has some less conventional RTS elements, but let's be honest, you're gonna be fighting a bunch of robots. Finally, Ashes of the Singularity doesn't even have a trailer, but here's some gameplay and, you guessed it, you're fighting a whole bunch of robots. I think out of all these games, it's safe to say this one has the most robots. We've had a bit of a dry spell of massive robot strategy games lately, so I'm happy to see us getting some relief. I'm not big into small tactical games, and this is why. Why have a squad of four people when you could have 400 robots carpet bombing the planet? What, you need them to save the president's daughter or something? It's too late, the robots got her. Okay, so how do I pronounce this? Eiter? Well, anyway, as some of you know, I'm a huge fan of the original Diablo, and this game seems to come closer to that vibe than any other hack and slash I've seen. You can feel the intensity emanating off of this game. That's how it should be. These monsters are going to kill you dead if you're not careful, and no one is ever going to come looking for you down here. I do find it kind of funny that the heroine is in a plain dress. What this says to me is her family can't afford anything else. I guess they had grandpa's old sword and shield, so she's using that, but she doesn't have any money to get any actual armor. So she's wearing the dress. She has to go to battle with what she has, because if she doesn't clear out these monsters from this dungeon, they're gonna rise up and overrun the place and her folks are gonna lose the farm.
Okay, some of you may be thinking, what the hell, Ross? You already did a Daisy knockoff section. Isn't this the same thing? Well, almost. This is another DayZ ish game, except instead of zombies, we have cannibals. Big difference, right? Well, besides that, this one actually supports single player, and best of all, you can beat the game. This game has an end. Add that on top of my favorite visuals and atmosphere out of all the DayZ games I've seen, and oh yeah, I wanna play this. I'm not sure why there are cannibals, though. I mean, it's an active forest. You'd think they could find other food. These days, I mostly just play PC games. Although, like 10 million other people, Super Metroid is one of my all-time favorite games. Well, one guy, Dr. M64, is remaking Metroid 2 and giving it the Super Metroid treatment on the PC. This is really cool because I've never played Metroid 2 and it was on the Game Boy originally. So this is a huge upgrade for the game. My understanding is Metroid 2 was sort of the odd one with abilities they didn't have elsewhere, Metroid Evolution stages, it should be awesome. I just hope Nintendo doesn't shut them down. They like to do that. I actually don't know a whole lot about this game and I don't want to. I know it's a mystery and you're investigating a missing person and I know it's one of the most gorgeous looking games I've ever seen and I think it has open world exploration. Yeah, that's enough. I don't need to know more. If a game or movie grabs my interest, I like going in blind. Damn, this game looks good. It makes me want to live there, wherever this is. In fact, it looks so good that I think my computer probably won't be thrilled about the idea of running this with full shadows and anti-aliasing at full speed. So yeah, I look forward to playing this game many years from now, once we have faster computers, jetpacks, and ray guns. Sunless Sea. This game recently came out. It's an adventure survival exploration game set in a unique world based on another game, Fallen London. I haven't played that, but from what I can tell, this feels like a Victorian era version of the Shadowfell with some HP Lovecraft mixed in. With a setting like that, I feel like anything can happen. There'll probably be a rich story playing through it. The whole premise has me convinced. Now I don't have to plan my own sea expedition to discover eldritch secrets about the world. I can just play this game instead. Uncanny Valley is a survival horror adventure game where you play as a security guard and start poking around the building you work at more and more, and I'm guessing things don't go well from there. This game tried to get crowdfunded, but they only made 18% of their goal, but they're pushing ahead with it anyway. We're getting lucky on that one. I like the atmosphere of this and how there's a strong focus on the story. I actually used to work as a security guard before, and I'm guessing the most boring day of this game is going to be better than my best days working that job. Working security sucks. Don't do it unless you don't have other options. Out of all the games on this list, this is the only one I currently have. I bought this years ago because I was so sold on the concept. On top of surviving an ongoing zombie apocalypse, they advertise having to retain your sanity, falling into depression, alcoholism, losing electricity over time as the power plants stop, military cleanup operations. The depth and scope of this honestly sounds like my dream game. But it wasn't finished then, and it's still not finished now. So I'm waiting until it's ready. I don't even know why, but I absolutely want to play as an alcoholic loner scraping his way through the zombie apocalypse. Actually, I take that back. My character won't be alone. He'll be in good company with Samuel Adams and Jack Daniels. Now I can't say that this is going to be the best game out of all the ones I mentioned, but this is the game that inspired me to make this video in the first place. This is a private show, buddy. No entry. And so it begins. Private show, huh? Well, here's my VIP pass, bitch. 
I've been wanting to see a hardcore beat em up for a long time now, and this game is exceeding all my expectations. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is Streets of Rage meets Eyes Wide Shut. This trailer gave me shivers watching it. It was so good. Yeah, that's right. Have some drugs. You've earned it. Okay, back to work. Oh my. This game is id candy. Whether you love it or hate it, this is not a game you forget about. Game of the year. So, a lot of games, huh? It is staggering. Okay, I know people are probably getting tired of this, but I want to save myself a few hundred emails because I know some people are thinking, Ross, you obviously forgot about this game. I probably didn't. So real quick, here's a lightning round of some of the major ones. Witcher 3. I still need to play through the first Witcher. Forget 3. The Division. Could be fun, but it feels like it needs a good story, and this is coming from Ubisoft, so... No Man's Sky. I would want to play this, but I hate how the color of everything looks like a sun bleach photo from the 70s. I don't like the 70s. That kills the game for me. Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. I am interested in these, but I'm worried they'll be 10% awesome and 90% boring. Okay, that's enough. You get the idea. Point is, I probably have a reason for a game you like not making my list. In fact, here's some runner-ups while I keep talking. See, that's the thing. There are so many games now, you can be as picky as you want. Like, this is a great time for space sims, strategy games, first-person horror games, graphic adventure games, heartwarming emotional drama games arena shooters, platformers, co-op games, it's overwhelming. It seems like every genre is either doing okay or it's exploding. PC gaming has been getting bigger and bigger for a while now, but lately it's getting scary big. It kind of reminds me of the video game crash of 1983, except back then the market was flooded with crappy games. Now, we're getting flooded with crappy games, great games, okay games, weird games, there's a million games! It makes me feel like a dog that's excited but is distracted by three different things, so it's freaking out over what to do next. I don't know what's gonna happen. If it keeps up like this, I'm just gonna get pickier and pickier. Like in the future, I'll be saying, oh, no, I don't like how that guy's mustache looks. Oh, I'm skipping this game. Okay, to finish this off, I will say I do not envy game developers right now. Your competition is monstrous. If you were working on a game right now, man, some of you are gonna go broke. For those who are about to go homeless making a game, we salute you. But for everybody else, we're friggin' set. <laughs>